welcome to the next episode of our podcast. I'm uh, really pleased to have Dave and Rosie Fellingham with us today. And Dave and Rosie, you've pretty much been a part of this, the church history since the very start of the church, wasn't it? Like yes, 20 odd right. years ago. Yeah. Um, and Dave and Rosie are here with us for a month. So we've had the pleasure of having them with us preaching on Sundays and just being meeting lots of people in the church, which has been great. Um, so today we wanted to talk to Dave and Rosie about their history, um, the musical history, and the preaching, like it's just been in your family for generations. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to tell us about... Yeah, yeah you well, know. my grandfather on my father's side okay. um, was saved in the Salvation Army revival in the late 1800s and went into the Salvation Army ministry. And part of that was that... Um, uh, he was in the Salvation Army band and um, I've got a picture of him taken in 1895 an old black and white <laughs> picture oh. um, standing holding the Salvation Army flag wow. with the Felix Stowe band um, on the seafront where they used to preach the gospel wow. yeah wow and then he went into the Army Training College became full-time and was sent by Booth to Hull, a city in the north of England, and he saw revival. And uh, he used to take the band out from the Salvation Army Church. They actually called it a barracks, Aww. and they would take <laughs> the <Marching>. old instruments <laughs> wow. out to the pubs. Yeah. Um, late at night on a Saturday night, and they would play in the pubs, preach the gospel, and then bring people back into the Salvation Army barracks wow. and preach the gospel and I've got stories and newspaper cuttings of hundreds of people being saved. Wow. So, wow. yeah. And that's, awesome. would have your dad experienced that or would it have been more stories that he would have, your granddad would have told yeah, him? Yes, that, that was before my grandfather was married. Okay. Um, but my father carried on the tradition. He became a preacher in the Salvation Army, but he was also a Salvation Army bandsman. But one fascinating story about my dad was that um, he was sent to King's Cross in London, which was uh, the, the red light district, yeah. and it was very difficult. And he had no musicians, and so he had a concertina, <laughs> but he didn't know how to play it. So. He prayed and asked the Lord to show him how to pray it. Now wow. he was already a musician. I was going to say, so I don't he, think that would yeah, work yeah, for me. Yes, he, he, he played the trombone right. and he played the piano, but um, God taught him how to play Amazing. the concertina and he used to use it in open air meetings wow. to, to play. Yeah. And even in the last little bit of his life, he died when he was 80, um, he, he used to play the concertina for the uh, seniors worship time wow. in our church in wow. Brighton <laughs> it was still playing it then <laughs> <laughs> using the gift yes <laughs> <laughs> so you were brought up in the Salvation yeah. Army Church Rosie what church were you what's your church history well my parents were converted under George Jeffrey's ministry which was like the beginning of the Pentecostal um, churches yeah. in um, in the UK and um, we ended up in the Elim Church, okay. and um, I was part of that church when I met Dave. Okay. But my dad was a local preacher, right? And we used to go with my dad, my brother, and I, and we used to sing duets as yeah. part of what what happened when my dad went preaching. Yeah, and so you you met each other through church events. Was that kind um, of? We, we <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> not exactly. No. It was We're, my brother's birthday, okay. and um, a friend um, that we had went to the same school as Dave, and he invited Dave along to this party, and that's where we met. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the first things we did was to start a, a gospel group, and we sort of sang in coffee bars and things. Yeah, didn't is we? that yeah. right? Yeah. My brother was part of that too, yeah, yeah. and his future wife. And wow, yeah. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So we used to rearrange the pop songs of the 60s right. and put 
Christian words to them. <laughs> Wonderful. Because yeah. I'd already started to play the guitar. Okay. And because uh, I played cornet in the Salvation Army band. Right. But um, I, like all teenagers, the pop music thing started, mm -hmm. and uh, I, that's what I was listening to, and I wanted to express my faith to my contemporaries, right. to my peers, really. Yes. So, guitar and rewritten Wonderful. pop songs. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. people have re obviously responded quite well to that, yes. I'm sure. Like, yeah. Really um, and it, in fact, it, um, uh, it it developed so so well. We 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 got to be quite well known. But um, when we got married, <laughs> we took the group with us on our honeymoon. <laughs> Well, we did have a few days on our own. We went to Ireland and... Um, did it rain? <laughs> some of the time. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. But we yeah. had a friend who kept saying, you know, we need to go to this place, Newcastle in Northern Ireland. It's just ripe for something to happen. Wow. So basically, we planned our wedding round... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. ...going to this, and it was really quite crazy. My, actually, my dad went over as well. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, we won't tell you all the story, it'd be too shocking on this, but, um. but uh, yeah, we we did open air meetings, preaching. Oh, you got baptized, group, as and well, I, didn't I got you? baptized wow. yeah. in, the, in the Irish Sea, yeah. well, no, no, in a paddling pool on the beach, <laughs> and yeah. a sparrow landed on his foot, <laughs> not quite like a dove. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No. I thought that was rather special. Yeah, that really yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, um, we were called the, the Witnesses. Okay. We um, had yeah. several bands with different names. It's a bit yeah. hard to remember what name it was yeah. called at different well, times. Well, it was the Witnesses it? then. And then we, uh, we got a bit more sophisticated, electric, drum kits, bass guitar. Um, Is that when and it we became called Sound Faith? Sound Faith, yeah. <laughs> electric organ, I played electric organ in that. Yeah, and people would book you to come, or would you just? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. People would book us to come yeah. to churches, youth rallies, and at that time there was lot. There were lots of Christian coffee bars. Right. That was the way to okay. reach, reach young yeah. people. Yeah. So. And was this before you went into teaching yes. yourself, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is in your yeah. early married years. And yeah. Yeah. And so then you moved into teaching. Yes, I, I studied education and music okay. at, at university and became director of music of a high school in, in Brighton mm -hmm. where I also worked by day as a teacher and by night as a professional musician okay. in bands, conducting orchestras um, and to be honest it took me away from God right. for a while yeah. and I became well, I was a, a world opened up to me that I didn't know existed, mm -hmm. and I got seduced by it. To be mm -hmm. honest, and it was, that was a hard time for Rosie. Well, I was going to say, how was that for you? Well, it was very difficult because basically, the man I agreed to marry mm -hmm. was like the the young version of who he is right. is now, yeah. and suddenly I was married to somebody I didn't really know very well yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that I really knew that God had meant our marriage to be. Mm. Um, and when it got sorted out, it was such a relief. Mm. Wow. So yeah. it was like a suddenly moment? Or was well, I was playing piano in a jazz trio in a nightclub mm -hmm. in Brighton. Mm -hmm. And it was quite a prestigious gig. There'd just been a premiere of a big film in London. Right. And the cast bowled down to Brighton for their cast party. Mm. So it was a, a good gig. Yeah. And I was playing jazz piano. And God spoke to me and said, David Fellingham, what are you doing here? And it was like... What am I doing here? It's like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And um, that's when I was pregnant with Luke, our older okay. boy. And you were beginning to sort of feel that if I'm going to be a dad... Um, I need to get my life sorted wow. out. Yeah. And so were you part of a church at this time? Were you no, okay. because music had so taken over my life. Right. We, we did go to church occasionally, but it was quite occasionally. rarely. Yeah, it went. Yeah. Yeah. I did have one or two Christian contacts that I kept up with that yeah. was yeah. a lifeline for me. Yeah. yeah, wow. But then when God really got hold of me, we started um, going to a Church of England um, where there was a very, very good preacher, mm -hmm. um, Ian Barclay, who was world-renowned. Yeah. 
written books, conference speaker, and um, he took me under his wing, really. And um, it was when the worship, as we know it now, was just in its infancy. Mm -hmm. There was what was called scripture in song. Yeah. And um, I just thought, I can write better songs than this. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that, that <laughs> yeah, was yeah. my mentality <laughs> then. I, and um, my life got sorted out with God. I started to write worship songs. People began to sing them. Yeah. And before I knew it, uh, the, first, the first one, Fletch Wiley, who was Andre Crouch's musical mm -hmm. director, heard the song in a church in America and recorded it. So that was how my first song got yeah. published. Didn't wow. intend to write it yeah. for that at all. Yeah. But uh, that, that's how it happened. Amazing. And uh, so we, we were in that church for, two, well, I was full time in it for two and a half years. So Came that was out quite of, quick, was it, yeah. you joined the church and then? Yes, I, we, we were in the church about 18 months. Okay. And then the vicar asked me if I, Ian asked me if I would go full time. So that meant leaving my very, very secure right. and good job. So it wasn't, I was going to say, was that an easy decision? So I guess there was the practicalities, but in terms of where your heart was at the time, it felt like the right. Oh, absolutely. Move. It was like coming home. Right. But I love my job. Right. And it I love the kids in the school. It's yes. still quite a big thing. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the, the head, I mean, it, I had one of the best school orchestras in the south of England. Wow. And uh, it it was again, uh, uh, yeah, the reputation of the school yeah. and the orchestra was was very good, but the headmaster was uh, accepting uh, uh, of it all and actually allowed me to give my testimony to the whole <laughs> of the school. Wow, that's incredible! And several kids got saved Gosh. as a result of that. Yeah. So for you, that's quite the turnaround, isn't it? <laughs> suddenly, from like seven, eighteen months later. Yeah. So. I was relieved because I felt our life had got back on yeah. track. But there was a very interesting um, time when Dave did a a concert. Um, he was leaving at the end of the summer term, but because of exams and things, then they did this sort of final concert right. at the end of you know around Easter time, and you wrote a piece of music that incorporated all sorts of things that you'd written you know, really from the time that we'd met and um, it was just my life being <laughs> put out in music oh. and I became just totally overcome with tears, yeah. you know, it was like, where is all this going mm, now? Yes. And I sort of dashed out and hid oh. myself in the car <laughs> and sort of cried my eyes out. Wow. But that in the end it was, just, you know, I was so glad that our life was getting straightened yeah. out. But it was a loss at the time. Right, because mm. of laying it down, yeah. kind of not really yeah. knowing yeah. what the future was going to hold. And yeah, that's yeah. So I'd, I'd made up my mind that music had taken me away from God. Okay. So that was the end of it. Wow. But then a big test came because I was, I was actually offered a very well-paid and prestigious job um, on a cruise liner that Rosie could have come on as well um, and uh, it would be playing with really fantastic mm. musicians and it's like I'd said no wow. after trying desperately to make it and the other big thing that happened when I was a, a teacher that kind of put me on this trajectory of trying to achieve something in the music world mm. was I was one of the first people to bridge the gap between rock, jazz and classical music right. and I wrote a, a cantata called New Creation which bridged that, that gap mm. and it was performed in the Brighton Dome which right. is a big yes, theatre, yeah. was on BBC television, yeah. I was interviewed wow. and one of the biggest rock stars of the time, Keith Emerson of Emerson Lake and Palmer, actually bought a ticket to come to that concert. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit annoyed yeah. because people wanted his autograph, <laughs> but, but he bought, bought a ticket to right. come. And that was projecting me into that world even more. Yes. So to lay all that down was yeah. a big, big step. Yes. But it's the best thing I ever did. Wow. Yeah. So then you were part of this staff at the Anglican Church. Yes. And then... 
When did things move from there? Well, um, it uh, was new wine in old uh, wine in, in skin. Old wine skin. And yeah. I think to just put it very briefly, the wine skin burst. Okay. And um, well, yeah. did you? It's a long story. Which no, we I won't understand. Go into. When you first started going back, you were just happy to be back in a church. Yes. Is that kind of where you were? Yes. And then as things went on, you were kind of feeling yes. a sense of there must be yeah. more. Yeah, and we. Kind of. I mean, there there was the Sunday meeting, yeah. which um, Ian Barclay preached at. Fantastic preacher, four or five hundred in the morning, four or five hundred in the evening. Mm. But I was responsible for the Wednesday night meeting, which was a thoroughly charismatic meeting. Right. But um, basically, as Rosie said, the, the wine skin burst, right. and I had I had to leave. Okay. And it coincided with the time that Terry Virgo was moving to Brighton okay. to plant a church in Brighton. And you knew Terry? We, we'd met okay, a few okay. times. I didn't know him well, yeah. but we, we'd met a few times. And uh, he invited me to join him wow. to plant the church in Brighton. Wow. So the rest is history. And when right? we say that, it's kind of, but I'm sure at the time, that's your job that you've mm. just had to leave. Yeah. Do you know, like, oh, that must have been a very a uncertain... very, very difficult and yes. painful, very painful time. Yeah. It was probably the nearest... The greatest grief beyond sort of losing somebody right. close yes. that I'd known. It was yeah. a defin definitely a hard time right. for a while. Yeah. Mm. And then you enter into this new... Yeah. And I, I was now writing worship songs. And of course, with the way what is now New Frontiers, but it wasn't called New Frontiers yeah. then. In fact, um, we didn't have a name to start with. And then it was... Terry gave it the name Coastlands from the scripture in mm -hmm. Isaiah your, the Coastlands will receive your law yeah. so um, we put on a, a Bible week with about 3,000 people and I got involved at le leading worship at right. that and from that my songs went worldwide yeah. um, so they were already getting out there but yes. that's what really Amazing. really launched yeah. Um, yeah. and so you've had opportunities to travel yeah, um, because the songs went worldwide, I was invited to all sorts of places. I mean, what, one of the big stories was that, that I, I wrote a song, The Lord Has Displayed His Glory, which isn't one of my best songs. Um, and uh, I, we, we did it at the Bible Week. It went on the album and I forgot about it. But out of the blue, I had a phone call from a pastor in Korea who was a pastor of an 8,000 member wow. church and he said we sing your songs in our church and the song has got the lines in um, hallelujah let your kingdom come let the deaf hear let the blind see let the lame man leap like a deer which isn't great poetry <laughs> um, he said we were singing your song the Lord has displayed his glory and what we were singing actually happened deaf people were hearing blind people were seeing Revival's broken out. Um, will you come to Korea? Wow. So I had the privilege of speaking in the Olympic Stadium to oh, 80,000 people. Goodness. And it, it, it was incredible. Yeah. We went yeah. to Prayer Mountain. You all were able to go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, Rosie was able I to I didn't go. think I was going to be able to go because I wasn't initially invited. <laughs> but um, it's, I won't go into it all now. Yeah. It'll take too long. But. Um, yeah. It worked That's out amazing. that I was able to go, yeah. which was wonderful. Yeah. I'm so glad I was able to go because it was such a profound experience for David that if I hadn't been part of it, yes. um, it just would have been quite difficult, I think. Right, mm. wonderful. That's mm. amazing. Yeah. Gosh. And yeah. so from there, what, when would have that been? That was 1991. Okay. Yeah. So still lots to come from oh, there. Just yes. Well, the the um, I suppose the worship songs mm. have o opened all sorts of do mm -hmm. doors. So I travelled in Far East, um, India, America, Canada. Um, you did quite a bit of teaching for YWAM, didn't you? So that yeah. that's what took you to quite mm -hmm. a few places. Yeah, yeah. and al al also uh, we began to network in the UK with mm -hmm. other or I began to network with other songwriters like Graham Kendrick, Dave Bilbrow, mm -hmm. Chris Bowater, um, who were very, very big names in the praise and worship mm -hmm. scene in England. And we, we used to meet together to pray and fellowship together. 
and we all represented significant things that God was doing mm. in in the UK mm. and coming out of that what is now called worship together right. um, that that was born through us meeting wow. together That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. and Dave had a vision for having um, a band of his own really and by this time our boys were growing up right. and because they'd been brought up with musical around them they um, were very involved as well and um, basically um, we started this band that from our house um, there were called and it became it was initially purple fat fish okay. <laughs> then it became <laughs> fat fish, fish. Mm-hmm. and um, they were the group of people with some others that that came, uh, that came here yes that's right yeah. so they my, my sons wanted to be in an evangelistic so it's like going back to my teen years wanted to have a band that was playing good quality um, rock music well it, it, it was the acid jazz thing right. at the time yeah. in, in the early 90s and um, you know bands like Jamiroquai and yeah. um, Incognito Band, bands like that that were very popular so that was their musical mm-hmm. style and they were very very good at it um, but they wrote songs with a Christian worldview but were doing secular gigs right. um, but they were being a Christian influence mm-hmm. in, in that world but then God spoke to them about worship um, my two sons went away for a couple of days of prayer and fasting just to seek God about the direction Mm. for the band whether it should continue because they were very popular Mm. in what they were doing and they felt they should focus on worship so as I was leading worship so much they became my worship band right so when I was invited to come to Fredericton Mm -hmm. in 97 um, they were my worship band Um, having been with me the year before in Toronto at oh, the wow. in, yeah. in the move of the spirit yeah, yeah. amazing yeah. and obviously they're continuing yeah now. so their worship ministry is continuing so Nathan and Lou um, well it's Lou who fronted Fatfish she married my son Nathan and um, she w- she is a very good singer in mm-hmm. her own right mm-hmm. So when Fatfish stopped, she continued her Christian singing music career, mm-hmm. but Nathan was really her musical director. Right. And my son Luke um, is very, very good at um, the whole recording, engineering side. And um, they, they work together. Um, and in the house we used to live in, we now have a full-scale recording studio. Oh, fantastic. That, that Luke runs right but he still plays bass yeah um in, in worship bands he sometimes i i play a bit of jazz and um luke will play bass for me wonderful um so, <laughs> yeah so we we still keep going thank goodness yeah. they you know yeah. really took to the music because yeah. that probably would yeah. have been yes our sons live in the house that we used to live in because right. we bought a house with my father that um is really divided into into two separate dwellings okay. and so Luke and um, his wife and three daughters live upstairs and Nathan and Lou are downstairs Amazing. and um, since um, quite early on in Covid they started a program um, which was initially called Come and Sing but that was when other people were doing it on other days okay, but yeah. they now do Worship Wednesday and um, that's every Wednesday um, half past eight English time yeah. but it's all on YouTube and, and they've got a great following Wonderful. and if anybody wants to have a little bit of a spiritual yeah. uplift just yeah. look up Tune Lou Fellingham Fen- Worship <laughs> Wednesday. Amazing. It's yeah. the wonderful things that come out of situations you know yeah. that you wouldn't have even That's planned right. for previously. Yeah. It blesses us to know that comes out of our old house. Yeah <laughs> really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so great and so things aren't really slowing down for you guys, are they? <laughs> no, no. So, um, my ministry in the church in Brighton, um, that there, there was an agreement that when we got to sixty-five, we would come off the payroll okay. at Brighton and, and and not be on the leadership team. So in twenty ten, 
um, I had to do that. But the church we are now at, um, Lifespring in Horsham, um, got wind of that happening and invited me to come and help the yeah. Horsham mm. church with their worship Wonderful. because they were floundering a bit. Okay. So I did it on the proviso that we found we really found somebody younger to to do it. Right. But I was happy to be a kind of stopgap, yeah. which I did for a couple of years. But then I handed it over to the young guy who was the lead guitarist of Fatfish. <laughs> And he is now leading the church in Horsham. Oh, wow. Just went to my, yeah. Amazing. And yeah. so you're still part of the church there? Yeah, we're still part. I'm not, yeah. I'm not on staff now, no. but, but that, that's where we go. So I, I do some of the preaching mm -hmm. and act as a theological consultant and do a little bit of pastoral stuff. And Rosie and I run a small group. I mean, Rosie runs it more yeah, than yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she's the driving force behind it. But uh, Dave yeah. just heads things up. <laughs> <laughs> but Rosie does all the yeah, work. Right. <laughs> Gets the glory. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's wonderful to have a base church community that you know that yes. you, but then allows you to when, I mean, go now, away for seasons. Yeah, yeah. Now Dave is no longer part of the staff. You know, we're, yeah. we're free to go wherever God asks us Thanks. to go. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So hence we're here for yes. a month. Yes, and yeah. that's amazing that you're able to do that. Yeah. You know, like that's yeah. a well, long that's time to be away from everything. Yeah. And yeah yeah that's good but you find now that when you go it's more for the preaching yes i mean it, uh, it's it's much more um preaching teaching relating with leaders yeah yeah, yeah. and um yeah the my book on revelation which i wrote at the beginning of covid um is out there and um, i get asked to do seminars on that and, yeah. yeah. So did you write that during COVID? Or is it yeah, okay. at the beginning of COVID, a lot of people were asking me, "Is did I think it was God's? Did I think COVID oh, I was God's judgment?" Right. So I wrote a theological paper okay. on the judgment of God. Yes. Um, and um, came from the perspective that it's all part of the world being out of joint. Right. It's not specific judgment. Yeah. But it's part of the general judgment yeah. on the earth right. because of the corruption of sin. Okay. I sent it to Ian Barclay, who was the guy who brought me out into the ministry in the wow. first place, who's well into his 80s yeah. now, um, I, just to get his opinion. And he came back to me almost straight away and said, oh, this is really good. The church needs to hear it. Can I blog it on my blog? Well, his blog goes worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yes, by all means. Um, and he then encouraged me to develop what I was saying in that in, into a book. Wow. So, so that's how I came to yeah. write the book on Revelation. Amazing. And if you'd have said to me at the beginning of 2020, you'll write a book on a commentary on Revelation, I'd have thought you were mad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the easiest. Book. No, for sure. Uh, but uh, mm, he has put some of his stories in that in it as well. Right. So it yeah. So interesting read. Yeah. 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 Mm. Oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> great. I think still you have a great love and interest in worship oh, don't you definitely. and yeah. um you're always sort of ready to you know give help and advice yes. mm. in that because yeah. you really feel that quite strongly don't you yeah. yeah yeah and i do keep my hand in with with playing uh, right. as well I play, From, yeah. um, I, I play quite a bit of jazz so i've, I've got a got two or three guys i can get together to yeah. form a jazz yeah. trio um yeah, yeah so. that's, that's, it's wonderful. I, you know that to be such a gift. You know, both of you to to be able to go to different places and mm. with all of your history. You mm. know, like a lot of that has happened and in, encouraging. You know, because we can be oh, we're in this season and it's tricky. And you know, and you've been in a number of different seasons, knowing that God continually, yeah, you know, has different yeah. reasons for different things and pressing on and encouraging so yeah it's a great joy to us now that our grandchildren are growing up and all got a relationship with with god Amazing. and particularly our older grandson he's um really doing a lot of stuff um doing he's really an influencer for young people wow. And God's giving him a, a great ministry. Amazing. And our granddaughters are all lovely singers. Yeah. And, yeah. Wow. Mm. So what age range would your grandchildren be? 13 to 20. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, and Je Jesse is a 
he, he's done a diploma in, in music and uh, he, he's a very good bass player and keyboard player. So he's fifth generation. The next generation, yeah. Yeah, that, fifth that, generation Christian musician. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he doubles up for Nathan sometimes with <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll be they'll be talking about their great great grandfather, <laughs> yes, know, yes. Felix Stowe, and just, yeah, 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 that's just yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and just being here today, but also just the blessing that you've been to our church, you know, over the years. Like that's quite the incredible story. <laughs> Was Joe calling you? <laughs> however many years ago yeah. out of the blue and how that kind of relationship formed yeah. it's just yeah that's amazing. yeah it's wonderful yeah. well we've loved being here oh it's yeah. great yeah we feel quite at home here yeah that's yeah. lovely thank you yeah. thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you on the next episode bye